I always forget how tall you are. How you doing, man? I'm RC, man. Pleasure to meet you, too, fam. There's my man over there like it, you know, your alpha. Your boy band, because all our black asses got on yellow, red, and black. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up, limitless, take a stem and cap in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, only vision I can trust. Uh, trust, uh, limitless, take a stem and cap in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Hey. Ooh, ooh. Hey, that's what that NBA money look like. Cut it out. Cut it out. Hey, that's what that NBA money out. look like. Cut it out. Know wouldn't be allowed in. All I got, hey, you know Google work now. Huh? You know Google work now. <laughs> nah. I, can, I can find out how much you made in the hey, heartbeat that's what now. They think. Don't look at my shit. A little bit more on the offside. Huh? Oh, Fred. Oh, yeah. Fred Rick. Fred Rick. He, he, he wanted him funny. Yeah, he he wanted want him funny. Bro, I, 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 I watched the show when he was trying to be humble. Y'all had to tell him, bro, stop trying to be humble all the time, bro. <laughs> Y'all always try to pipe down. They got a little something. That's that Florida. I think my wife got yeah. more money than me. That's that Florida. People got streets named after them. Really? In Jacksonville? Where they from? Where they from Jayville? They run all that shit. Other than the couple fights and shit, I saw you in Atlanta for uh, That's why I'm at, that I've tank a, fight. Yeah, I've been there 20 years. 20? <laughs> hey, see? That's why they put it high. They step up easy. Open bridge. Yeah. My Centennial High School. Yeah, I got a crib over there right now. Do you want to stand up and get the picture? Back up. They done built it up. There was a bunch of little apartments over there. The you can't fix what God did, no way. The devil might have done that, though. <laughs> First of all, dog. <laughs> what you say? Come on, hey, come on now, say we don't do nothing twice. That short. <laughs> I ain't that short. We ain't taking short. no pictures twice. You little, you little athletically. I am You're not, little athletically. I'm not little athletically. I'd be small hooper. You play, you play like you was six eight. Thank you, man. Yeah, you, get there. So you, you definitely be nice. You definitely hit like if it was above six feet, <laughs> even though you, you may not be. Be, be. <laughs> you know, right? Be nice. <laughs> Can y'all hear us? I hear yeah. Hey, there we go. Y'all sober? Yeah. Oh. Right, right, yeah, yeah, nah. yeah, that ain't what it's supposed oh. to be. Yeah, yeah. That didn't sound right. It was Fire up. More non-sober. <laughs> right? uh. Whoa, hey, check it out. Welcome to the DraftKings collab. I think everybody's been waiting on this. I know since we started our show, this is something that I was interested in doing. Uh, no two men I respect for the way that they live life, for the way that they played the game, more than Stack and Matt, uh, obviously Chan and Freddie T, but more importantly, what they're doing post-career, I think, is, is a step above. Like, so many people want to get into the business of broadcast, of media. Uh, I don't think everybody can figure out how to do it and continue to remain their authentic selves. I think both of these brothers ha have done that, and they've done it in a way where they can go into any office building and do business, right? But they can also walk into any hood and have conversations with the same people that look like them. I think that's the important part about what we do, is being able to bring this, right, into the buildings of people that don't look like us. Why are you talking about them like, we ain't, we ain't no good Cause entrepreneurs. Cause he talk about y'all every day. They just saying, but we, can, we, like, we ain't no good I mean, can we get our flowers? Look at the two signs. <laughs> but, 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 but let us give y'all y'all flowers. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I'm a bitch. Yeah, okay, I'm that. sensitive. Yeah. I'm light-skinned. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I'm light-skinned, man. <laughs> <laughs> I get sensitive sometimes. <laughs> y'all know Chan always ready to take off, right? Some <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of these two brothers doing so well. Goddamn, I'm doing well, too. Well, well, let us return the favor. OK. OK, first off, we honored to be here with y'all. And we can say the same things. I think um, just from watching all y'all, y'all careers, and we know what it takes to be in this space, and we know how hard we get critiqued as athletes, athletes who's actually done it, right? They'll go to a hospital and let a doctor tell them, I need to cut you up and do this. And they'll be like, I'm OK. But we actually did the sport and all the experts at it. But when we talk about it, we get critiqued. So I respect how y'all handle that. I respect how y'all support each other. You know, it, I, I say many shows, and I was just talking about it, but how we know he always real humble and don't say too much, but y'all kept giving him his flowers and was like, bro, 
be proud of yourself. You really right. done some great shit. So I, I, I appreciate that and I love seeing brothers give each other their flowers daily and also winning together. So salute to y'all too. Appreciate it. And also too, I just think, you know, Ryan and, and, and your crew, you guys have kind of set the standard for what it's supposed to be like. You know what I mean? And I think both both sides, I mean, we've done it from a basketball standpoint. You guys have done it from a football standpoint, but also understanding that the platform that we were given, we've also understood that that's going to lead to other opportunities uh, individually and collectively. And I think that's what, you know, you love to see is, you know, you on ESPN, me on ESPN, you guys doing other individual things that have stemmed from coming together and fellowshipping and really just talking shit and having a good time, you know what I mean? And, and to be able to be paid like we are still athletes too is another blessing. You know me, I'm, I'm a man of like this many words, <laughs> but uh, no, that's love, man. And we try to lead with positivity. You know, like we know we have a lot to offer in our experiences, but uh, we, we, real, we feel like we have a, a, a bigger agenda, you know, and just really giving back to our community and doing it the right way. So uh, I think from all of our experiences and just trying to bridge the gap, it makes it worthwhile, you know, to come here. I know I'm not sure how you guys do it, but we're on the we're on the flight every week. We grind and we hustle and we try to make it happen. And uh, once we, you know, decided to make, to do this, we said we got to do it nonstop. And that's what the ultimate pivot is. So everything you see us, us give y'all, we're doing it out of our hearts. The question I would have for y'all though is. Um, like the way, like everybody who plays a sport ain't tough, right? Like you, you know cats that are athletic, cats that are talented, and their job was to go play the sport. And then there were other people who had a different sort of grind in the way they approached it. Both of you guys, being guys that kept it real on the court, right, that played physically, played the game with skill, with technique, but also seemed like y'all were always ready to be whatever you had to be to help a team win. And now you move into this, this other realm of life, this other part of media where people expect you to be buttoned up. People yeah. expect you to, to speak a certain way, act a certain way, sort of retreat into yourselves. How have you maintained the exact people you were growing up and now flipped it into the second career? Uh, I mean, I just think what, what has allowed us to have success post NBA is just authenticity. I think, you know, what you see is what you get with us. Uh, never perfect, but always real. I think through our career, we understood the, the, the assignment. We both didn't, we both got drafted, but didn't make our first run at the NBA. So we had to take different journeys to get to where we are, to both end up winning NBA championships, to both respectively play 15 and 14 years in the league, um, is through who we really are. So, I mean, I think that drive as an athlete one thing we talked to Cove about, we did Cove's last interview, and you know he told us, you know, as athletes, we're disciplined, we're structured, we're thinkers. All those things transfer over to business, yeah. and I think you know everyone handles those qualities different. But as long as you stay true to yourself uh, and transfer and put the work in, because a lot of people think, oh man, I can do a podcast. Shit ain't easy. Yeah. Like they said, we're on flights every single week, uh, tracking people down, doing our homework, doing our homework for our other shows being fathers, being businessmen, being partners. There's a lot of stuff that goes into this. So we treat this as if this is our next act. Although we're not physically on the field of the court, this is our next act and we treat it as if we are still on the field of the court. And I just think we have, I've always had the um, attitude of I appreciate everything. So my attitude in the game was I got to prove myself constantly. I wasn't Kobe, I wasn't none of them, but I was a, I was a player that competed with everybody. So. I always played with a passion and played the game like I appreciate it. So coming into this space, I tell my team, I tell him every day, bro, I appreciate you. Because there's so many people that, uh, especially retired athletes that don't have nothing going on, don't, I don't get the, opportunity that, the opportunities that we get in after sports. So I tell my team all the time I appreciate them and we work so hard like this is our last show, we won't have another show. We appreciate everything we get and I think that's why we winning. And we appreciate our fans too because we constantly show the people that support us that we appreciate them. That's why we always out in the community. That's why we talk to people and, and engage on social media because we don't want, we, we've never been the type that get the success from our fans but don't uh, relate with them or interact with them. You know what I'm saying? I've always been somebody that, that's always in the streets and like to be around the people because that's the people that make us, always made us. They gave us the, 
the um, that the uh, motivation to make it being in the hoods with so many people saying you can't so many people that didn't make it that's the motivation we get to make it so just appreciating my people around me appreciating the gift and the opportunity to be in this podcast space that's what keep me going and and this space and it's funny y'all both talking about the transition the transition out of sports and this space that we're in I don't think you can chase money because that was the one thing I, I do local radio in South Florida that I was working for I think what was it 20 27 grand a year. It wasn't about the check. It was about the experience of working, communicating and all that stuff. And did y'all ever have that time when it was like, it, it couldn't be about money because you weren't making no money once you transitioned. And I think a lot of, I would say, and take it deeper, I think a lot of athletes struggle from making those millions, whatever it is. And then why am I going to work harder to make 40 grand? Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah, did y'all, was it ever a time like that with y'all or any of y'all? I think it's just understanding we got to pay our dues now. You know, as former athletes, sometimes we get tossed to the top of the totem pole or sometimes we get tossed to the bottom. So depending on every situation is, you know, how you maneuver and how you react. So as you said, you know, jumping into Fox at first and then ESPN and understanding it's not a ton of money. It's not what I'm used to making, but I understand it's a hell of a platform yeah. to have my face on ESPN, have my face on Fox, to have my face on NBC Bay Area, have my face on Showtime. So my whole thing now is in this next act. My initial plan was to have my face on as many quality platforms as possible until one of them that I really, really want to do can take over all of them. I, let, let, let me ask you a question, Ryan. Um, I, you know, I, I've, uh, I fell into a big space with uh, George Floyd and becoming a, uh, uh, what a lot of sales are speaking for the culture. Yeah. And I think you, you fell into that space. Yeah. And uh, I'm honored to say that. And uh, even with sports and the culture, having that role, yeah. knowing eyes are always on you, knowing that you that people are expecting your opinion to be what they want you to yeah. say, and it's not that all the time. Yeah. How do you handle that with being on TV and in being you know out with the people because everybody don't agree with everything you say? Sure, I think y'all said it. I think y'all said it right at the beginning though. If you're authentic, it don't matter. Yeah. Right. Like I always say, it's easier for me to tell the truth because lies are hard to remember. Right. So if I'm the same every time, that doesn't mean you have to agree with me. Because what normally happens is if there's something that you speak out on and a mass or majority of people agree with you, they feel like they want to agree with you all the time. But now I'm talking for you. I'm not talking for me. And I think the other piece of it is, too, like every fight ain't my fight. Right. You know, you you had a connection to yep. George Floyd. You yes. had a passion yes. for that. And so you not only put your time into it and your money into it, but you put your face on it. Yeah. Right. It's different when people see you and they connect you to something. Because now forever, you're connected to that. And I think for me, it was just like, right is right. You know what I mean? And, and I get it all the time now, right? Like if I even say anything that has to do with race or culture, it's, cause that's the new, the new key word, right? Is race baiter, yeah. right? That word was created through this tumultuous time because they needed something that could discredit the truth. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so the people that use that word, they say, okay, if we use this, this immediately turns the people who follow us to make this person feel or, or feel like this person is something else. But if I'm me, I don't give a damn no way. Right. Right? And, and that was the thing, you know, and I tell this story all the time. I've told them in 2016, 2017, during Kaepernick, they stopped putting me on TV. Mm. Right? They would come in a production meeting and be like, well, the president said this, how do you feel about this? Or the president said this about athletes, how do you feel about this? And I'd give my answer. Y'all know how production meetings yeah, work. Yeah. You do the show before you do the show. Yeah. And then they go, are you gonna say that on TV? And I'd be like, hell yeah. And they'd be like, well, we're not gonna ask you, yeah. right? And in some of that, and some of that I respect them because in some of that at that time they were saving me. From yourself. Right, because if I go out there and I say that, now I'm viewed a certain way. Yeah. But then, let's fast forward to 2020, when you were a big part of it. Now, y'all know, I'm on days off. I'm at the house not doing nothing. Hey man, can you come on TV today? Your voice is so needed. Yeah. The people want to hear from you. Yeah. And the thing I always say about that was, I was able to say I never switched up. Right. Right, I was able to say I didn't change up because they wouldn't put me on TV. Right. right, I stayed myself. And I think that's, that's what's important because even if they don't agree with me, they know I'm not doing it for anybody else. Right. That's yeah. truly what I feel. And also I think too is something that's important is that you don't always, we don't always, we not always gonna agree with each other. We always gonna have different viewpoints, but I think in Jack says all the time, you can disagree without disrespecting. Yes. And I think now when people don't agree with you, they want to attack your person, your character, your family. 
and we all ready to fight at, at any given time. You know what I mean? So that's why we really got to be careful. But I think there's ways to, for me to disagree with Fred or me to disagree with Channing or even Stack, but still have a conversation with respect. Because again, at the end of the day, we're all learning, we're all evolving. And I think some people get so set in their ways that they block something that could truly help them. Or, or sometimes they'll kill the message because they don't like the messenger. Yep. You know what I mean? So I just think we have to really be more open-minded and understand there's always going to be another opinion. There's always going to be another point of view that you don't necessarily have to agree with, but hear it out if, if, if that's the space you're in. Freddie T, and I give him this, because like me, I'm like, when I hear it, I'm ready too. Like we realized we had to start protecting each other in public. <laughs> you know what I mean? He probably calculated. He, us, yeah, he's always thinking. He's always the one that's measured. And he'll be like, okay, RC, like, nah, I don't do this. Or RC, I don't know about that. And that's how I know, like, when he go, it calms me down. Cause I'm like, hell, if Fred pissed off. Fred nigga got shoot, mad. We all got to chill. <laughs> Fred nigga got mad. Y'all know I be chilling, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but seriously, uh, I think, um, you know, just the reason why we're here, DraftKings, obviously, and it, I guess this is for everybody. Have you guys on your platform and then Shannon and Ryan, how do you use DraftKings platform to foster certain connections, you know, and, and be able to get certain messages out? I think that DraftKings comes with a different demographic for yeah. us and for you guys, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's always a new opportunity to meet new people, shake new hands and, and hear new points of views, but also get our point of view across to a whole new audience. Gain fans and, and sometimes they won't like what I, we say and possibly lose them. But at the same time, to me, it's about, again, like I said earlier, my goal with being on different platforms, I'm speaking to some similar audience, but sometimes all these networks I'm talking to have different audiences yeah. that are in love with that particular network. So for me to be on four different mainstream networks mm -hmm. is the opportunity to meet new people and, and foster new relationships and, and be brought into new situations. And a lot of things with athletes too, as we're talking at the business side and the tech side, you know, we're able to get into stuff, sometimes you gotta put money in, but sometimes just your likeness alone yeah. is enough for these brands to build something around you or give you a piece of what they have because they like what you stand for, the way you carry yourself, and the way you could educate, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for when I'm trying to sound smart? Uh, eloquently <laughs> speak or, you know, uh, you know, really Elo speak eloquent. to eloquently, that's what it is, <laughs> speak on, on, on the matter at hand. So again, I just think it is, it, it, we're always looking because especially, you know, with Jack and I, we were the bad guys. You know, yeah. he got in one of the biggest fights in NBA history and lost the whole season. Yeah. I fought off the court and everyone knows the reason I, but it is, you know. <laughs> You've been wanting to ask that You've question the whole time. You can ask me whatever you want. I, but I, see, but I, I think people see a, a snapshot of you and, and, and give you a label. Oh, well, that's who, Jack's a thug because he went in the stands and protected his teammate. Or I'm a bad guy because I had to do some shit that I had to do. But again, it's, it's always, it, it's a small snapshot and, and we really enjoy kind of changing changing ideals of who people, you what you got to say, Chad? I know you got some shit to say. I asked this question, I was like, can I ask this question? Yeah. They're like, no, no, we talking about um, transition on. Ask it. How in the fuck you drive for 20 hours mad? <laughs> Nigga like, hour one, hour two, hour three, hour four, like you gotta sit back sooner or later. So that was a, so that was, that was the urban legend cause Kanye rapped about it. I really only drove 15 minutes. Oh, oh okay. That makes See? See? Yes, bro, I was like, quick, this quick man, trip. Cause I, I know so like, I, know bro, cause I was about to say like, hey. I know us light skinned fellas like, yeah. we won't be mad that long, like sooner or <laughs> later. I was, I was, I was back in the house firing one up in like 45 minutes. Oh. Quick round oh, trip. Man. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, quick round like, trip. It's easy to stay mad that long. Yeah. yeah. That's simple. 15. Yeah. I think, though, like, to the, the other space that I love what, what Matt's talking about, though, is actually using the platforms. Because there's only so long your name truly stays hot. Right? That, that there's a time when you're a player and you're, you know, y'all mentioned it. Like, you mentioned not being cold and those, like, those guys are going to get first dibs at a lot of things, mm -hmm. right? And so when you do get your opportunities, I say this all the time, every day is an interview. Yeah. Every hand you shake, every conversation you have, somebody's looking at you and trying to critique you and figure out what can they use you for. And so while people are using us to give them that face or to give them that voice, we have to be using that platform as well for the next step, for, for that step, or for the next hand we get to shake where we walk into a different room. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say like um, to the point of why why this works and like the DraftKings connection and the podcasting because podcasting blew up the tech like the tech side blew up and I know we're gonna talk about that, but I always say it as like people aren't used to seeing 
five alpha males sit down and not fight. So what you said, like, we disagree. Oh, now we got to fight. No, we ain't got to fight. We disagree and we respect each other. Right. And I really believe as if this podcasting space, especially with ex-athletes, is like, oh, these are males that run their, I call, I call dudes like, not myself, these four, ecosystems. Like, ecosystems of people that employ people and like everybody's making money off you just being alive. And a lot of people don't know that. And I've, I've been around, I know, I hang with a lot of these ecosystems. I call them lions. And people aren't used to. So somebody that's really not a lion that sees five lions sitting around and just vibing, and we disagree, we good to disagree, we cool to disagree. I think that might calm their little inside fire of wanting to, well, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> no. So why your take, voice went to there? Take it easy, because that's, that's, you, that's you as a dude that get real hot. The fuck you, the fuck you buddy dude be hot. <laughs> fuck you, buddy. <laughs> but that, that's, but that's why I, I really think this works as I go through and I go on pause and I sit around with my two G's, you know, weekly, and then just watching y'all from afar, like, seeing, like, these are lions. These are men. This is a dude that sit in the car and be hot for 20 hours. That was in my mind, Matt. I thought you was hot for 20 hours. I ain't hours. Lie. When I tell the story going forward, it's still 20 hours. And then I saw this man. I, I saw this man throw a punch. From here? From here. <laughs> Damn, you wanted to fuck him up. <laughs> so, so what a lot of y'all don't know is when I grabbed Ron, Another beer was thrown in his face, yep. and he tried to throw the beer and get away. So I couldn't let that slide. Couldn't let that slide. I couldn't let that slide. But also, too, I want to say, you know, look how far we've come, and, and really shout out to DraftKings because none of us, as we said, none of us, with all due respect, were superstars in our sport. We were all were role players and got the job done. But for us to be one of the talking heads for such a big company, and not just DraftKings, all we're all affiliated with other companies, but. Look how far we've come, and it's because we've been able to articulate our point of view. Everyone's always told our stories, and, yeah. and with all due respect, most of the time it's, it's, it's white people trying to tell our stories. And sometimes they do a good job, but sometimes they miss shit that we see. Other people may not see, but we see it. But I think we've been able to transition now to be able to obviously tell our own stories, give our brothers and sisters the opportunity to tell our own stories, but then also encourage others. I can't tell you how many times people from the league have come like, yo, we started our show because of yep. all the smoke, or we want to be this version of all the smoke. And when we started this, it wasn't necessarily to inspire is the greatest human act. And that wasn't necessarily first on top of our mind, but once we kind of got into it and we started getting that feedback, we took that as a badge of honor because we are opening these doors. And Ryan said before we got on camera, it's athlete driven now. Media is athlete driven when we're talking about sports in particular. And I know you guys would rather hear from, uh, uh, with, with our brother Stephen A. Smith, as great as he is, he doesn't know what it's like to have to knock down a free throw to send a game into overtime, or to get a, make a big play, or get, uh, get across the goal line for a touchdown. So although he's great at what he does, when it comes from the people who really did it, I think he obviously carries more weight and respect. Hey, Matt, you talk about um, you know the evolution, right? Starting from the bottom, having your struggles, then going up. The three of you, RC was undrafted. You know, you guys had Late your early rounds. challenges, yeah. but the three of you won championships. Channing and I, we're on the outside looking Wait in. Wait a I love it. Hey guys, by the way. <laughs> it had to be said. I just Look, want to say. If I didn't say it, I you said were every say it. show when I'm joined by other champions, there are certain things we can talk about that Fred and Channing cannot. <laughs> you know? This is when, true. When Matt was mentioning my some micro, of those, my those micro, free throws, you know, man, some of those you. moments. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know. I, I was feeling, because y'all are intelligent people. I'm in a different realm, but man, fuck you. <laughs> but the, the point I'm trying to make, and I'm trying to make a crossover, right? I want to talk about, like, you guys' career is sort of like what we have here with technology yeah. and what the message we're trying to get across. From the beginning, technology just evolves over time, pretty much like your careers, and then, but you don't know what it's going to give you. There's been plenty of times where I try to log into my DraftKings account to get that, that one o'clock parlay. I'm like, fuck, the Wi-Fi fucked up. <laughs> I can't get my play in. But eventually it happens, and then it's a beautiful thing because I'm here, but I'm able to play the games all across the world, and that, that is the beauty on the flip side of technology, pretty much like your, relate, like your careers. It was some struggles early on, but at the end of the day, those championships had, you know, had to mean something. Yeah. So from you guys' perspectives, what's that feeling like? Because I wasn't able to feel it. 
I would say this. I though. really want to know what's that I feeling. Think, I, think really the, I think the one thing too that I want to say about you, because you won't say it, is our careers were very similar. Yours, Yours was, was not. Right. You know what? I didn't want to. I didn't want to check, yeah. Matt. No, <laughs> this is my I mean, first you were time no, no, no. in person. <laughs> yeah, you, know you what definitely. Saying, but I'm a huge fan. You definitely did, did some Hall, hey, yeah. I did some Hall of Fame yeah. shit. Yeah. You did. Exactly. You did. Exactly. No. Hey, exactly. I just gonna be honest. Exactly. Hey, exactly. And he yeah. jumped up, Frenchy. By the time you say it, by the time you say it, nah, where Bun B at? I told Bun B, I love him to death. I love his music. I used to tax them texts. He did. And so I think, I think that's the other thing, though. And um. Like even as it pertains to like the content and the way technology works, it's also understanding, I think when you have a certain career, it makes your grind different. Right. Like I'm just a worker. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know it, like Chan knows it. Like when we go into a show, man, like I don't I barely talk. Because like I'm I got my notebook out, I got my phone out or whatever I got, I'm taking notes, right? I'm trying to tell them, okay, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, like if they say this, like my thing is always being prepared and the reason i'm like that was like i knew most days ain't nothing i could do with randy moss anyway right but if i prepare enough there may be that one play i can anticipate <laughs> there may be the one hit i can make that changed the game i'm not gonna change it constantly i'm not gonna do what he does because i wasn't that blessed talent wise you know what i mean and i think now when you switch up and you get into this like that's the other thing is people i'm trying to not say this in like a bad way but there aren't a lot of guys who were superstars who end up being good at this no, part of right. it, right? Because there is so much work in it, and there is like there's some shit you gotta shovel sometimes, right? Like like you gotta be able to deal with some things where you aren't the superstar, you know? Like when you walk out there with Stephen A, Stephen A, that's his world, right? You know what I'm saying? Like they gonna cater to him more than they gonna cater to me, yep. right? And so you gotta figure out how I'ma work and how I'ma get to a point though to where that flips. Like my thing was, like like just like in ball, my thing is now on TV is like, even though y'all my dogs and I'm working with y'all, when I'm finished, I want people to be like, one of them things is not the same, mm. and it's him. He kills it. He different. Right. Yeah. You but know also I mean? too, I think what makes you guys work and, and and us work is being a star in your role. So whatever that role is, like, and I say with all respect, like I'm the quarterback on our team. And Jack, Jack was the one that told me that, like, hey, you're in charge when you, because I, I do the business side. When you're in the meetings, I know I'm in the mo I'm in the room with you. So when you got people you love and trust, and you can fall into your role, I remember one of the things that Doc Rivers told me with the Clippers was, you know, we got Blake Griffin, we got Chris Paul, those are our superstars. Everyone else can still be a star in their role, and when you buy into what your role is. You can do whatever you want and, and be prosperous. And, and and one thing too is when you're in your own lane, there's never traffic. Like we all feel there's a ton of podcasts out here right now. That's real. But I don't feel like none of them are in competition with me and Stack because we bring a different dynamic. And on the flip side, there's a ton of podcasts in their space. And I don't feel like none of them are in a competition with the pivot because they move a certain way and do different shit. Yeah, we might be slimmer because we had the same past, but we right. move way different now. So being a star in your role, and that's not just in, that's in life, in, life, yeah. in business, in, in, in your family, in your, in your home, there's just find what that role is. And although you could, you can possibly wear multiple hats, master what that role is, and then you can branch out and do some other things. Yeah, I know you go, I know you about to take it, but the one thing you said though, that's powerful is that he told you that, yeah. right? It, it's, right. It, it's different. Like you could feel it, but if he feels it too, like that's the, it's, the synergy. RC, you know? it's, what, it's, what, it's funny, so that's why I call it, it's what we do. We do that. He'll be like, RC, you gonna start it. You are, you're an orator. You speak beautifully and you say every fucking letter in all your words. <laughs> start it out. <laughs> Freddie, you're gonna give people flowers. Like we literally like, as y'all see the shows, y'all like, see role? and y'all get the unk vibe. You get, you know what I'm saying? Like we get the vibe and people don't hear this a lot, but as y'all talk, we talk. And be like, and even RC afraid to throw me stuff. Be like, Chan, it's some wild shit. Yeah. And something I didn't even see with my research. And they be like, yeah. <laughs> hey, like it's Bobby. It. Hey, but it was Bobby Smurder, and I had read that the little chick read that the, the man made his penis bleed. Yeah, I said, I and said, I, said, I was like, RC, that's not your place. To I, I, I was like that. that. I, I I gave it to you. I was and like, RC, I, I said, know Chan. what he said. He said, RC. He showed me the story, and I read it in the car, yeah. and I was like. I got you, bro. Yeah, that's it. I ain't asking this. Because I can ask it with that. Yeah. I can ask it with that <laughs> country dumb. Uh, what happened with that um that, that one girl that said uh <laughs> I knew the story already, but I could do that um. She said something happened to your little man, <laughs> and now we're gonna get the story, oh, and that's wow. what. That, but we like we we throw it off each other. Even though I see something with Fred, and I'm like Fred, 
this dude did this, 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 this charity wise. Yep. Like, nobody looks at me to tell you about no charities. Like, God, what, the, what the fuck you talking about? You help us again. I'll be like, Freddie, this That's dude done gave 75,000 yep. last year to this dude. Right. So we, we yep. like, and you say the point guard, yep. and we got three and y'all got yep. two, but we, we really do the same thing, but it's really winning. It's yep. all about winning. It's all about the common and goal. And I, everybody wants to win. Yeah. And I think what's good too is like you said, when you know your role or your space, I feel like we can all ask the same question to get get five different answers because of the way we frame it or the because of the way he can relate to giving back and he can throw some shit in there that we may not know. Or when you talk about little dicks bleeding, you might be able to throw some stuff in there that <laughs> Why well, I gotta be a little bit. I'm, no, no, I wasn't talking about you, I was talking oh, about okay. the story. I was talking about I don't know nothing about that. I kick my, kick my but leg, I'm just saying right. No, I, I say all that to say it's just like when you can when you when you know your lane yeah, and your role, you can relate and you can put a little bit more personality and, and, and personal experience behind the question and get more out of the person because you are we're coming from the right angles with the questions. Stack for for you. Right, like what I love about y'all shows when, is when people sit down with y'all, you see a different side of them, mm-hmm. right? And I think part of it is being able to relate through the, the player vibe, but the other part is like, hey man, like I know you are a real one. For you, how do you use that though to, to draw people in, but then get them to open up to you about things they don't do with other people? I think for us is everything we've been through in our life has been in the media or been on, out in the open. We wear emotions on our sleeve. And I think we want that, we want to come off as super vulnerable. We want to come off as, as not knowing everything because a lot of times when our guests come on, we learning from our guests. We learning who they are at the same time. But a lot of times the way to soften up your guests or to wake them, uh, make them be more comfortable with you is by telling your own experience. So you know that they can relate to you, right? So I think a lot of times with me and Matt, like even with the brawl, you talk about the the, the the driving with the Derek Fisher stuff, everything we've been through. But even with look, me calling off my wedding, you know, it's the George Floyd stuff, like a lot, most of our life has been out there for everybody to see and we embrace it. We don't run from it. We embrace it because that's who made us. So we've learned how to make love to the bad times just like we make love to the good times, yeah. right? And that's what keeps us going. And when people see that, I think we're more relatable that way. And I also think too, creating a, a, a safe space you know, all of us have been through the bullshit the way the media can twist your words or you say something and they use this much and put the rest of bullshit on it. So we've created a space where everybody knows through who we are, what we're about, that we're not trying to get trick you into saying no dumb shit. We're not trying yeah. to get, we're trying to go viral because we had a deep conversation. We're not trying to go viral for you trying to say dumb shit. And also do That's be big. able to create an environment where they feel comfortable. And you know, with our environment, when you come on all the smoke set, we got music playing, we got food. If you choose to indulge in cannabis, we got plenty of that for you. If you choose, if you want some wine or some alcohol, we got that. So we want to kick it and talk before the show starts. So when you yeah. get on set, like my whole idea when I came up with all the smokers, everyone can relate. I feel like it, ladies, wherever your best conversation are, the nail shop or, or wherever, right. the man cave is where we have our best conversations. And I wanted to put a camera on that. Mm-hmm. You know, no matter who you are, the best conversation are kicking back watching the game. So how yeah. do you capture that and package it up and put it on TV? So that's what we felt like we've been able to do is just create an authentic environment yeah, where we dope. can humanize our guests. Like, you know, rest in peace, we keep saying his name. You know why Kobe was great hooping, mm-hmm. but you didn't know, like Kobe told us, like, I don't want no one to remember me for my first 20 years. I'm like, motherfucker, you're a Kobe Bryant five-time champion, one of the right. greatest players ever. He's like, no, bro, watch this next 20 years in business. Right. You know what I mean? So it's just the opportunity to give people that safe space where they can come and find out and, and really tell people. I think my favorite thing on our show is when we talk to whoever, man, I've never told nobody this. I love that, right. And we're like, hell yeah, because they feel comfortable enough to share their authentic feelings. And we know on the flip side, that's what you guys really want to hear is yeah, the yeah. real shit from these some of your favorite people. Yeah. But even with that, Matt, uh, hey, stat. Be careful saying love around this boy. He can get loose. He crazy as hell. But you said bad love, good love. You just able to make love. Huh? You said bad love, good love. You just making I'm, love. I'm able to make love to the bad times. Yes. <laughs> just, just be yes. careful. Yes. Be careful, yes. cause you never know what change. Hey, hey, we set these chairs up right. <laughs> no, but what, what jumped out, when Matt, when you were speaking, what jumped out was you said safe space, environment, and media. And immediately in my mind jumped out being minority owned. Mm. You know, that's pretty important where you can talk your shit yeah. and pretty much direct the conversation so where the culture can get it 
and they can understand. How important is that t to you guys? Oh, well, I mean, for me, that's my whole reason for being, right? That's why people love me, because I'm hood, because I've never changed, because from basketball to all the smoke, I've been Steven Jackson, that's all, right? And, and me being my authentic self, me saying things that most people won't say, me jumping in front of things that might not benefit me, but me just having a big heart, all those things make me who I am. So I think the way we talk and, 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 and being honest with ourselves, people want that, like they want that. But at the same time, if, if me saying that I'm a solid person, if, if me saying that there's nothing in my, in my, in my uh, closet that you can bring out today to say I embarrassed myself, do I did anything, and I, and I stand on that, then I have to speak that. I have to live that. I can't, I can't just be living one way and come on the show and be a whole different person because that's not what our culture is, right? It's, if our, our culture's been watered down and been showed one way for so long. That's why we always looking at TV like, that's not us, that's not our culture. But now we controlling our own narrative. Now we showing up in sweatsuits just how we supposed to show up, right? So that's why, I think that that's why we went in and that's why we gotta be ourselves because we can be successful and win looking like us. There's no dress code, there's no playbook. We create our own playbook, and that's what we show in the world. And I think too, on the flip side, for someone like me and Ryan, we can talk that side, but we can also put a suit and tie on and go on to yep. ESPN and talk that other shit too. Facts. You know what I mean? And be able to give you that Disney side of a real take. Because obviously, like said, Ryan said, Ryan, they were holding him out back in the Kaepernick days because he was too real for the that platform time. he was on yep. at that time. But on the flip side, if he would have had his pod at that time, he would have yeah. came and really kind of gave you that. So the versatility, we're all very versatile and we can all speak, you know, to different topics. Did y'all see, y'all see this motherfucker that drug me on Inside NFL? You said what? You drugged me on Inside NFL. I didn't drag you. No, he didn't drag me, <laughs> but the opportunity was yeah. there because Ryan did what he did and now I gotta wear a suit and now I gotta do it right. I have no problem with that yeah. because I can switch over now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I think just the teaching part of this is that being able to we be can. diverse. Well, we that's can. not your platform. But yeah. this is your platform right. so you can do what you want here. Yeah. And but, saw, <laughs> but then also, but people <laughs> saw me here so long for three years, almost yeah. four years. And then now I can jump on inside the NFL and I'm getting tweets and texts like, bro, you ain't cussing. Bro, you ain't doing this, I and I'm like, but Channing, I'm not allowed to cuss, but, but, but I, I, I am multifaceted to where I can be like y'all too. Y'all never had gave me the opportunity because I'm a college dropout and I talk crazy all the time. What'd you, what'd you just say? You are what? I'm, multifaceted? I, multifaceted. Somebody I'm said trying it. To, I'm trying to teach this other light-skinned brother some big words. I'm, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to throw it that way. Somebody said they made you, but I digress. Uh, um, hey, and I it was, wasn't RC. The, um, you're amazing, brother. Yeah. I just want to say you are amazing. You are, <laughs> we'll tell you about it. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want him to get mad. Yeah. They, Who said that? No, hey, they look at him like he said that. <laughs> that's a whole different thing. Yeah, but uh, that. no, that's, that's just in this conversation and what we're here for, you talk about being able to, he's Mr. Tech, uh, Mr. TikTok. That's what the kids call him. Yeah. We walk in the airport. That's the, the TikTok time. guy. Yeah. And he's going to more TikTok? than any of us. I don't even stage. have a TikTok. No, uh, all the people go, send out TikToks colonies. to me. Uh, and so, so the little what? young Nudist kids. Colonies. Yeah, they go viral. They right. talking about, he oh, always goes viral. Guy. But that's the beauty of technology. Just taking it back there. Like everybody got this device in their hands. So they can see this guy. We land together. We fly together. They run in Channing first. RC's on ESPN almost every day. He on Inside NFL Tuesday nights, and uh, but everybody runs to Channing because he's the because the most attractive one on the stage is me right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might be. Look, look, no, you're probably be. second, but go ahead. <laughs> That's a light. Listen, Red, I ain't going to argue with you, Red. I ain't going to argue with you, Red. Well, well, well. Hey, well, you well. stupid, dog. Well, well. You know, the other, the other thing is, too, and I think I always make the comp. I always take the conversation from fun. I know, I'm sorry. I it's apologize. Okay. You know, that's what I, that's what I do. Name, bro. It's okay. what, that's what I do. We know it's but running the right I think, though, but Matt brings up a, a, a point that brings me to something else. You take what, what I dealt with this week, right? So I'm on TV and I got my suit on and we're talking football. And nothing in football brings me to anything that is about our culture. I'm not asked those questions. They want me to talk. They're asking me about the games, this and whatever it is. But on our platform, I addressed Brady Quinn attacking Deshaun Watts' character. Brady Quinn making the joke. Not his first time either. Not his first time. But I say that, and then you have people like Marcellus Wiley, right? And he comes out, and what he says about me is, 
because he's talk, he's pandering to his crowd. Well, I know he doesn't talk about this as much on ESPN, but on his own platform, you could see that he doesn't like white people, right? That's what he said. And then I was like, well, first off, I didn't say anything about that. I said, what I'm doing is, I said, if I feel like there is something that affects our culture on my platform that I own, I will talk about it. I will address it. And if it's asked of me on their platform, I'm gonna say the exact same thing and they're gonna have to figure out do they want me to address it on theirs, right? It's not about, like to me, it's not about, the, the importance isn't about being able to switch up and do both because I could be 100% honest, all five of us could do that. You can sit around and talk about every motion and every movement on an offensive basketball uh, court, right? You can sit around and tell them, okay, if we're gonna play the man-to-man -man like this or if we're gonna drop a zone, you can do that. If that's what you wanted to do, Fred could do the same thing. Like we could do those things. You don't switch in any way to do that. It's that we don't control what's talked about on those. We control this. I own this. You're not going to tell me what I'm going to talk about yeah, here. Because right. yeah. what I'm going to talk about here is going to affect us. Right. right? And, I don't, and I don't think, I think what's, what's happened culturally is they feel like if I'm for us, I got to be against, against them. them. Yeah. And that's not the truth. Nope. It's a, way to, it's a way to be black and proud without demeaning another race. Yes. And that's what a lot of people don't get. That's what a lot of people get. I, I, I tell stories all the time about people from other races who I know love me more than some people my own color. Yeah, and they've showed I, it in real time. I so I don't, I don't get caught up in that. I don't get caught up in that because just like you say, people be wanting you to say certain things, but if you affected by it, they not come and save you. So the best thing is, is just do best for you and, and worry about uh, the people that surround your immediate family and the people that care about you, the people that you support, the people that rely on you. A lot, a lot of people when they have opinions, they don't have nothing that nobody depending on them. You know what I'm saying? They, they don't have no responsibilities. And it's easy to say things to the mean the next person when you don't have nothing going on. How do you guys handle the response, I'm talking to the Pivot Crew, the responsibility of knowing that you guys are trusted in the community and they lean on your words and live by your words and are motivated by your words and encouraged by your words. Like, how do you, how do you handle it? Because that's a responsibility. It's something that happened with Jack too when he was going through the George Floyd shit. I'm like, it's one thing being a leader on the basketball court. But now the world is looking at you. You led the biggest protest in the history. Yeah. You know, the whole United States, what, 16 countries? 18 like countries. Like 18 yeah. countries. That's a whole nother responsibility when people are looking to you for life, yeah. not just sports. So how do you guys handle that responsibility? Just being yourself. You got to be your authentic self. I think we said it earlier. You know, I always go back to something I say all the time. Exposure leads to expansion. You know, and you just speak to your experiences in life. Uh, you can't be phony. They'll see through that. You know, every time I see you, Jack, stat, you, 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 like, you speak from the heart. All the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No matter what, you'll get on your IG, get on your live, and you just speak from the heart. You show love, you get love, you get hate, but you always have, know how to go back and pivot and communicate to that. But you stand firm. And I think once you do that, people will say, all right, this dude's solid. You know, I can't see through him. Ain't no BS that come with him. So I'm going to rock with him. So I think the pivot has done a good job at, they know what RC brings to the table. You know what I'm saying? For everybody that try to say, oh, ESPN has you doing this way. Nah, RC has a way to leverage that. And, but he speaks common sense. And the same with Channing. They know Channing going to always be Channing and speak from the heart. And myself, I, I'm, I'm very observant and I'm calculated yeah, yeah, yeah. and I see how things is going, but I'm always give you me at the very end of the day. So for us, it's simple. And that's the very reason we love our platform because we get to do that. We own our platform, we get to do that. And nobody else can dictate or tell us what to do. We control post editing, you know what I'm saying? So this month, Alicia, what she does is beautiful. And she on the same shit we on I, at the I end think, of the I day. think just one thing, I think, and we all said it like, be yourself. You can't, you can't paint nothing. You can't paint no pictures. Like you're saying, I think we grew up that way. Like, I think it's in you when you do that. But the one thing I think that we do, and I've seen that people try to do, I don't know if y'all seen it, is that people try to tell you about him and him about you. Yeah, you can't do that. Hey, what did, what did, what did Stack say? Hey, when Matt said this, what you think? Bro, we've been through so many things where people come up to me and be like, hey, man, Ryan did this. And I'll be like, I got Ryan. 
Period. Every time. Period. Like every time I'm every like, time. I got RC. And they're like, but what do you think about what do you feel about it? Say, you can say whatever you want right now. Yeah. I'ma take his side. Period. I'ma take I'ma take Freddie's side. That's the that's the quickest way for me to know I need I don't need to be around yeah. you. Yeah. Because I'm not going against him for nobody. And that I think that's it's funny that y'all have that, because we've talked about it before, where that we have that, where I can I don't say I don't agree with in either of them, but if you ask me about him, there's no way I'm even leaning your way. Right. Yeah, I said I tell them all the time. Right. I'm with you when you're right, yeah. and I'm with you when you're wrong in public. But I'm gonna tell you when you're wrong, though. I have to <laughs> yeah. say off to the side, no, and no, I yeah, it's, and yeah. I think too not to cut you off, Ryan, <laughs> no, because Jack is again. You you guys can see it. He's emotional. He's real. Wears his heart on his sleeve. But sometimes he wants to do and say stuff that is real from the heart, but also could be affect our platform. So he'll be like, bro, what you think about me saying this? I, I, ask got, I, I love it. Because I know I can hurt us. I think, I, that, I think there's a place for it, but maybe not right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or maybe not this way. You know what I mean? And vice versa. So I think too, to be able to trust and it ain't no your pride partner. in taking that and be like, okay, yeah. right, I won't. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I put it, there's no pride in that. Yeah. We just did it. Um, what was it with the tour thing? Yeah. When he yeah. said Tua looked like a stripper from, um, <laughs> what'd he say? Tua looked like a stripper from, and I, I took it as you disrespected strippers. <laughs> but what you say? What, <laughs> I say, no, ain't no bitch in there look like Tua. But he said something, and when it, when it blew up, we, we got on the call, and I was like, I was like, bro, you know what I'm saying? People kidding me. Because I, I live in Miami, oh, I, do, yeah, I, I do media in Miami, like, bro. <laughs> I got you, but that was too far. And he was like, bro, I'm going to figure it out. Right. And then he called me, and I don't want to tell exactly, you know, yeah. say all the back work was happening. Right. He was like, yeah, bro. Well, you because good. everyone can't say that to him, but he loves and respects you, so he's going to listen to you. <laughs> and we did that. and it's, a, it's, a bunch, it's a bunch of other conversations that we have to have with it, but that's, but it's, it's really the respect of it. You know why he could be like that? Because we had to start with him. <laughs> On the flip side, <laughs> trying to save him from his dad coming. <laughs> He be going yeah, so like hard he, on he's Dak. Off deck, man. Duh. Come on, man. Hey, talk your shit about that. Fan, now, you know when I crossed my leg. We didn't have to cross my leg. I'm Real about to go conference in. calls, bro. Bro, <laughs> he would have man, rub my knees when I'm about Duh. to go in. <laughs> you know, he the head of HR, too, for the pivot. So <laughs> I'm the head of HR. That oh, means anything, bro. I was about to say. I get it now. I get it. I get it. I get it now. He the head of HR. The thing, too, man, that like I love about these two, is like they didn't change with the responsibility. Okay. I think that's the hardest part, right? I think, you know, the, the, the way that you continue to nurture the relationship is the same way you earned it, right? You know, you, might, you know how it is, man. Like if y'all became friends because of a certain thing and he switched that up, that's gonna affect your friendship, Absolutely. right? That's gonna affect your relationship. And don't get me wrong, you know, like we had Michael Beasley and we didn't, we didn't expect that. Right, it just happened. Right. And in the moment when it happened, that's when the pivot became the pivot. But then we all of a sudden, we did all of a sudden become for the people. And so now, don't get me wrong, like anytime we're thinking about expanding the brand, reaching, you know, other audiences, people look at us funny. Cause it's like, you for us, right? Now you've gone and done that. And there isn't that sort of grace of like, but we do understand that there are other stories that are important. There are the things and we're gonna always be rooted and yeah. that's gonna be our foundation. Yeah. Yeah. But y'all grabbed us in five shows. <laughs> we didn't know what the hell we was, yeah. you know what I mean? And so like, that's the things that you just continue to do, man. And like, like this for, for us, we obviously just wanted to do a show with y'all, period. Ditto. Like yeah. at, at some point, get an opportunity to sit with y'all. But I do think it's a testament that it happens this way. Right. That Shout a platform, out to I'm, about say, I'm about to say, a platform like DraftKings says, we respect you, we respect them. You know what I mean? Let's, let's put them huge. together. But that's huge. That's huge. You know, for, for, again, for these big corporations to come to us yeah. to get the message across. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and again, it's a testament to what we've shown and, and, and how authentic and real we've been and the way we've been able to utilize our platforms and expand from that. And then like you said, not being able to put us in a box. We took a ton of shit because we did Will, Will Smith's first interview after he slapped Chris. Oh, that's, not, <laughs> that's not your space, that's not your space. And then hey, can we, you, can and then we did- my, Can you get my guy back on though? Just ask him how he doing? <sighs> Can you do a wellness check? Well, because we did Jada after that. Right. We yeah, did Jada yeah. before she dropped her book, and I never seen someone someone get so much. It was it was bad. You know what I mean? But I, I say all that it wasn't to say bad like to me. 
Because Jada, was, I was looking at Jada like Jason's lyrics. Like, <laughs> Ducktail, <laughs> Ducktail. That's you how I was looking. I was, I, I was thinking Jason lyric the whole you interview. Stupid, dog. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't bite the lip. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but it, it, it was mutual energy. I was in the middle, but the energy was flowing like was this, I, and I felt it both ways. I felt it, you know. But but I say all that to say is like obviously, you know, we came up in a certain way, and yeah, we speak for this, but at the same time. You can't put us in a box anymore yeah. because we can step outside and speak to other things in other lanes that is about our culture as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know we're taking up a lot of times, but we wanted to open it up for questions. If anybody has the questions, I don't know how we're supposed to. Are they gonna walk up to that microphone? Right yeah, I had a quick question for y'all. Uh, how do you all think about going into corporate partnerships? Are there different metrics or different things that go in you all's mind and a checklist on partner with this brand, don't partner with this brand. This brand isn't aligned with our brand. This brand isn't aligned. Just talk to me about how y'all go. I think what that. you said at the end is we've all fortunate enough now to think about it to turn down deals that don't align with what we believe and what we represent regardless of the money. Because again, like I said, for us to be real and authentic and then align ourselves with a brand that contradicts ourselves, no matter what the money is, we're going to take that it. hit and it's not worth it. So I think I, I know when I speak for Jack and I on all the smoke, when we align with the brand, as funny as it may be, if we have to talk about Manscaped and shaving ourselves, like it's shit that we fuck with, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's brands that we can align it and, and really use. So I throw the money out the window and do I really align with the qualities of, of what this brand represents? That's the answer, period. Yeah. Yeah. And if they want to yeah. control your content, yeah. I don't yeah. know how you do, yeah, you can't say no. You can't. It, can't do it. We we'll can't do you, it. We'll like, we're we gonna talk. We're gonna vibe. Yeah, if you want to yeah, cut yeah. shit out of episodes, it's baby. over. Yeah. But it goes back to the quality of what you put out. Yeah. You know, we look at what we put out, and we've heard from a lot of people that uh, we got top-notch production, right? And Alicia, she's won 13 uh, Emmys, Ooh. and she always comes back. She always comes Alicia, back. Alicia, we're and hiring. Say, <laughs> if, if you got to put she this high. here. She if, high. if you got to put this here and this here in the episode, Trust me, we can afford it. It, it takes away from the quality, yeah, we got right? Papers. So we, we looked at deals where we've turned down, especially in the first couple months, we were turning down six figures early on and looking at each other like, what what we just do? But we yeah. was like, fuck it, let's do it and let's bet on ourselves. Yeah. At least the quality of our content, it'll grow and then we'll be able to get it on the back end. So and that's you, and also you turned down, you talked real quick, you turned down that six figures for that eight or nine figure down the road because you're staying true and authentic. Better believe it. And also too, the other thing, like when when you listen to people answer questions, like you gotta have their backstory as well. Like we didn't get into this part of our careers broke. Right? right? Like like we aren't we aren't trying to take care of our families off of the first offer. Right, we could play the longer game because we had ourselves set up in a different way, right? Like you can only you can only turn down what you can afford to turn down. You know what I'm saying? Like if it's nope. gonna honestly, nobody on this stage is worried about what they're eating Wednesday night. Yeah. And that's the difference. So so as we speak, like, you know what I'm yeah. saying, we can approach things differently because we're building a brand after we've already had a brand. And yeah. that's what I try to speak. A lot of young podcasters are coming to me and they ask me similar questions, and I'm like, you have to see what Fred, Freddie, RC, and myself, where we were when we started. Yeah. So like, yeah, hey, 100,000. And it's a lot of money, but it's like, you know saying, we can look further, we can look beyond, but it, it's, it, there's different tiers where you live yeah. and there's different areas where people are trying to grow. And we, we, had, we had a head start, I guess, yeah, with sure. what we did and where, where, we, where we came from. Appreciate you. One y'all. last thing, really quick. We didn't get into it thinking Good about Lord. We didn't get into it thinking about the money. Like seriously, we got into it. We didn't know exactly how much money could be made. Did y'all just become on that best side friends? Of it. Yeah, I think we so. We just got into it and we we kept going. Channing and I, we we were trying to prove a point and we had to pivot. And that's where the pivot comes from. And we couldn't have got a, a perfect more perfect. There we go. That's partner. it. That's it. Next question. Me? So it was good shit. That's it, because your ass get carried away. Yo, That's sure. it, Fred, Fred, Fred. I love you. That's it. Next question, big homie. Yeah, what's up with it? Uh, both you guys' podcasts are, are rocket ships right now. What's the, what's the goal for you guys? Where do you guys want to see this 
kind of end up, and not even just end up, where do you guys want to see it go in the coming years uh, well, to come? That's a, oh, that's a great question. Um, I can be honest, when, when they called me, when Chan called me and we FaceTimed for an hour and a half, I didn't know where it was going, to be honest. Like, I thought it'd be a, a, a dope opportunity. Um, I think, for me, it's about creating something that has a legacy, you know, because you're gonna, if you do really well, you're gonna make money, right? If you do really well, we might get to a point to where we could sell it and we feel like selling it at that point makes the most sense for us. But in owning my own platform, I want this to, like I come from a sports background, right? Like the same way he talks about Kobe, that's how I want people to talk about us, right? I want people to say, when something else is made, when three other young brothers or three young, young, other young podcasters make a podcast and they start taking off, I want people to be like, man, this, is, this reminds me of the pivot, right? right? Like, like you can tell that they watch, like that's what it is. That's what it's about for me, man. Like I wanna create the dopest content. I wanna have the, the best space, but I want people, and I'm sure they do too, like, and I'm, I can be honest, like I look at what they do because they were in it before I got in it. Right, like I look at what they do, okay, this is how they set it up. Like this is how people get comfortable. These are the stories they tell, right? Cause I gotta look at that to say, this is what people gravitate to. Now how does Ryan Clark put his spin on that? And like at the end of it, I want people to be like, man, this is the dopest thing we ever saw. And it continued to evolve. And like everything has a shelf life. Like at some point it's gonna be some other group of people, they want to hear more than us. But until then, man, I want to always be doing this. I never want to be here. Because once we get here, we die. Quickly. This, 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 and this is a very, uh, I guess it's a hippie approach to things. I've been saying, what's my saying? Everything always going to work out. When we started and we ain't making no money and we grinding and we in Vegas for a week and we're going to, um, what are we going to them little bullshit, little young boy basketball games? <laughs> and we go into clubs and like we walking up to people and be like, hey, bro, you want to jump on the pod? And we're like grinding to do it. Yeah. And things will go down and somebody will cancel on us and things will happen. And I said to everybody, be like, listen, everything always works out how it's supposed to. Yeah. And I told them that for years. So my thing, answer your question. I don't know where it's going, but I know we have something special and it's going to be exactly where God wants it to mm. be yeah. in six months. 12 months, 18 months, and I really, honestly, yeah, my wife's over here, my attorney's here, like, they know I feel that way, like, everything happens exactly the fucking way it's supposed to happen, just work real hard, and I've been saying that for years, and that's my thing, and I know it's hippie-ish, and it's now, very tell silly. It's annoying as hell in the moment when you're trying to get him to do something, though. Well, you like, where you at? Where you at, bro? Goddamn, we in the car, bro. Everything gonna work out with me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be down there by 20. <laughs> they appreciate it. Yeah. For real, y'all, uh, first off, y'all voices are so important. Like, you give men the ability to, to share their feelings and be open about it, and I appreciate that. Le legitimately, I appreciate that. Have any of you thought about loaning your voices to ownership in, in your respective sports? Like, we would love to see more black men in these rooms making these decisions and helping these teams out. Like, have any of y'all thought about joining ownership ranks? I for sure have. <laughs> like, that's... You know, I have, I have this 10-year plan, which is why this is going to have to end at some point. Um, <laughs> you know, first of all, I want to be a general manager, though. Yeah, I was going to do that. Right? Like, I want to yeah. I wanna make decisions. I want to be in a position to control who gets what opportunities. And I think so many times we look at the top opportunity, right? And we're saying that we don't have head coaches or, like you said, we don't have ownership and all of those things. A lot of the reasons we don't have those things is because we also – don't get the entry level opportunities as well, right? Those go to those go to the cousin, right, or to Bill Belichick's son, right? Those go to the person that John Gruden can call Mike McCarthy and say, look, I can't hire him because they know he's in my family, but won't you put him on for me, right? We don't have people that are looking down the pipeline to make sure that it's equal opportunity. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not just hiring you. I don't, I want, I'm not gonna just put people in position based on how they look. I'm going to hire the best people. But what I want to do is to be able to develop the best people on an equal playing field. And so like that's definitely for me, like that's the, the next step of what I want to do is uh, get into being an executive, be a general manager. And my final, the final thing I want to do, I want to be an athletic director at an HBCU. So that's my last job. When I'm done working and I'm done grinding and I want to sit somewhere and be there 
for a while is get an opportunity to to give the game that that we learned a lot of times the hard way that young brothers and young sisters feel like it's not worth learning because nobody will teach you. Right? Have somebody say, no, I look like you, but I also understand in order to be what you want to be, you have to navigate the entire world. Right? This little microcosm of the world isn't the whole thing. <laughs> Tell this whole rest of his whole fucking life. <laughs> And when I get buried, I'm gonna get buried in New Orleans because my daddy and my grandma in New Orleans. God damn, man, we got a whole lot of motherfuckers waiting. I'm not <laughs> every show, dog. <laughs> Every so So I love one of the things that you said about success doesn't have a dress code. I think that that's important for everybody in this room to really understand and embrace. But what is another key attribute that someone who is successful you believe they should have? Well, I mean, it's just confidence. At the end of the day, when you wake up in the morning, you have everything you need to be great. I think that we, we, have, we have poisoned the youth to have them thinking that they have to go to social media to get validation of who they are and how great they can be, right? If you wake up every, every day in the morning, look in the mirror and believe in yourself and have confidence in, you, in yourself, that's enough right there. So we, I've always been super confident. I come from a small town. I used to piss in the bed, right? A you lot until he was like hey, 13. I used to piss. <laughs> hey, I used to piss in the bed. Oh, you too? <laughs> no, nah, he pissed on himself in games. In games. <laughs> oh, that's right. I've never heard about that. I didn't that. piss on myself in games. I was, I was a grown man. Y'all don't have, y'all don't have no. I was a grown man. Y'all don't have no grass. We, we could piss on ourselves and get on the knee, and the piss run down your leg. And you just wipe it off with water. But it's wipe still it down on you time. though. Huh? It's still on you. Let me get back to that. Let me get back to that. Let me get back to that. Nah, Damn the piss, all right? Damn the piss. <laughs> nah, but really just believing in yourself is, is, is really the first thing that you have to have because they're not going to hire somebody that's not confident. They don't, they're not going to hire nobody that they don't believe in that can answer a tough question when they're not around. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Or somebody who can handle the building when it's going down, right? They're going to hire somebody who, who can supplement that while they're gone. So, you believing in yourself first and not expecting the world or people around you to tell you who you are, I think that's the first step to success. And then I'll, I'll piggyback off Stack. I think it's about the follow through. What Kobe said, you yeah. got to finish the job. Yeah. How many of us out here have had an idea? We sit on it, we say, all right, this is going to be amazing. And then we don't do shit don't the next day, yeah. right? And then mad when someone else does it. And then you mad when somebody else took <laughs> yeah. my idea. Do it. <laughs> so it's about, it's about the follow through, finishing the job. So if something jumps in your mind, you got to go through with it. All these so-called entrepreneurs, uh, 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 geniuses and creatives, they just went the extra step yeah. to finish the job. It's a process. Mm -hmm. And once you complete that task, boom, you there. It's like Nip said, man, he just ain't quit. Yeah. He ain't quit. Yeah. Right. All right, fellas, I got a question kind of off track of what they're talking about. But uh, as a former athlete, have y'all ever thought about uh, interviewing or having on y'all show guys that not necessarily made it to the league, the guys that you played with, your brothers that played with in college, that had to transition into corporate America? Yeah. Because as you know, you guys are part of the 1%. But there's another 10 to 20 percent of us that don't make it to the league, get, get kicked out practice squad or whatever, and have to find another avenue to go to be successful. So have y'all thought about bringing those guys onto the show to speak to that, that bigger demographic to give those guys hope and an avenue and other avenues to, to find success? You shooting your shot? I mean, no. I, I'm just saying. I mean, it's about, it's, it's about opportunity. That's what the pivot is. It's the ultimate pivot. So holla at us. We'll see if we can put something together. And we so, have, so I'm going to oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, we yeah, have a Shea show Cotton. that just dropped today. Shea a Cotton. guy named Shea Cotton, who was one of the, they said the greatest high school basketball player ever who did not make it. And it's crazy the response and the feedback we've been getting from his story because to further your point, there's 99% of you yeah. that don't make it. 1% of college athletes make professional ranks. That means 99% of athletes don't, which is insane. So, we're the anomaly, the norm is the people who have it. So to be able to speak to that audience, we feel like it's huge. So we started something on, on all the smoke called Street Legends. Just guys that hooped, who were amazing, that didn't make it, but still were able to make something of themselves. And to me, I feel like those stories are more inspirational because they're more realistic. No, I think, I think it's what he, what he said as well. Um, the difficult part I've learned is finding the right story. Right, like somebody, like Shea Cotton, I, I'm a big Hoop fan, like I know who Shea Cotton is. And so that story excites me and that's something I want to learn about. 
and I don't know how it works for y'all. Like for us, we brought on people who we thought were great stories. Like we had Myron Roll on, right? Myron Roll never became, he like he never made an actual game roster, but he was a Rhodes Scholar. He was a college All-American. You know, he's now a brain surgeon. Wow. And to us, like that was like, that's an amazing story. Yeah, you didn't make it in the league, but it doesn't matter. Like your calling is so much bigger. You know, he was in all of these different hospitals during COVID and we did get a good response from the people that watched it. I've learned that if people don't feel a connection to a guy, like if you can't build it to make them really want to dive in it, so many people actually miss that message. You know what I mean? But if we tell you we got the rock on, four million of y'all show up. You know what I mean? And like, and then that is like that, like that is the thing is we'll get, well, why don't y'all do this? Oh, no, no problem. Like, we'll do a mental health show, period. To talk about mental health, we'll bring some on, somebody on that's, that wasn't a popular player, but it's huge in the mental health space. And then people don't watch it. And so I think you, you know, like we're still going to do those things, but if you're going to like want those questions and want those types of shows, we also have to support. So y'all talked about being role players when you were kind of going into pivoting into your second career. I guess, were there any other options that you had before you landed on the podcast? And then I'm sure as we all know, when you're breaking into a field that doesn't necessarily look like we all do, like, were you nervous that this, were you ever unsure that this was your lane? Well, when, when, when all the smokers first start, I mean, it was about to start, they wasn't sure on me, to be honest. We came up with the idea, was like, who is Jackson? What is this? Is he going to beat people up every episode? Is, is he going to come in here with a 40 and some dickies and a pistol? Like, no. And that was like, nah. And he did. And he did, and he did but, but, but nah. So, I mean, I think for us, we both were, we both were doing TV at the time. And um, me and Matt always hang out. We brothers. Uh, a lot of people don't know. We came close when his mom passed from cancer. So that's when we really built our relationship. So. Doing the show was, was the conversation about building the show was wasn't really a long conversation. Like do, doing so, a show together, of course we'll do it, you know. But he made this happen, you know. He he knew the right people. He called the right people. So I believed in everything he he, he was gonna do, right? What I, did I know our podcast would be where it's at today? No, but I believed in it, right? I couldn't have told you that at the time, but in my mind, yeah, we gonna make it there, right? So you gotta believe in yourself because if you don't, nobody else will. My, my dude's on the pivot too, RC. Him, me, I, RC, I know you ESPN broadcasting. I'm not, I'm not you know, supposed so you to answer the different. words. <laughs> no, hey, man, we talk free. You gotta get this motherfucker talk too long. It's it, it, 17 motherfuckers behind here. We've been here at 12 no, at just, night. Just, just, what was the. Did we know? Okay, well, I got out. Nobody knew what we was gonna do. I started to the way, like RC, and um, you were doing. You did media before you retired? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before, yeah. So, like, some dudes know they transitioned. So, RC was doing media before he retired. He was on TV, Matt and them. Yeah, Freddie just Freddie chill all day. <laughs> Freddie just chill all fucking day. But no, he he do he do a lot of stuff. But uh, no, I didn't know I was gonna podcast. Um, like I'm all entertaining and mess around and play like I do now, and that's why I keep like I keep that I keep that level like I keep that thing because I know what I am. I know why people ask me to be on their podcast. I know why a thousand people text me every day to come on the show because I just talk fun. So I didn't know what I was going to do after football. And then once I retired, I was sitting around and my wife was like, you going back to play, you going back to play. And I was like, no, I'm not. And she was like, what you going to do? So I bought three boats and I was going to fish all day. <laughs> I swear to God, I had two, I had a bass boat, I had a splats boat and I had a deep sea boat. And I was like, I'm going to just fish all day. And that shit got boring. So then I went back to the radio station and I started doing a couple shows and all, but I didn't know I was going to do the media but then I saw I was good at it and I just kind of transitioned and kept working. But you never know what you're gonna do because I, I was a college dropout, like I left as a sophomore. So like, just find your passion and work on it is my, total, is my ultimate message of what I'm saying because I never knew I'd be sitting on stage with these four amazing people and talking about podcasting or talking about media and all that stuff, but it happens. But like they were just saying, just grind and work. That's, that's a long thing. time, bro. Fuck you. Okay. Chan, I got a question. You yeah. keep saying college dropout, but you went to the league after your sophomore year, right? Yeah. I dropped out. Great That's great. not a dropout, That's bro. That's a dropout. No, it's not. You went I to the league. 30, I have 36 credits at Florida. Me too. <laughs> uh, left or total? Two years, 36 credits. I, I got 36 the left. I in college 36 times and failed in every 30, <laughs> all 36 times. Man, so sorry, guys. Me. We only have one no. more. I apologize. Oh, <laughs> but just quick, they put me in chemistry. 
I said, man, y'all can kiss my ass. Y'all know how hard chemistry is? I do, I passed it. I dropped that three times. <laughs> I took social dance twice, I took bowling twice, and I took golf. Just get him on the football field. <laughs> That's what they said. Get this big nigga out here. He gonna around. do it right for you. <laughs> Go ahead, ma'am. How do you guys stay humble yet motivated despite accomplishing so much? I don't think, I don't ever feel like, I don't ever feel like it's enough. To, to be honest, I think, and I, I think what happens is people focus on success as a destination and don't focus on the work as a journey, right? So when you look at the, the process of getting to anything, like the progress that you make every day, like those are the wins, right? And think about what Matt just said. They started a podcast because the podcast has done so well because they own it. Now they're moving into a production company. Now they're going to bring people on, which are the same conversations that we've had, the same conversations I've had with our producer, right? Like I'm in making my next deal with ESPN, like you're going to have to give me a 30 for 30, mm. right? I'm going to have to produce that, right? Mm. You're going to have to give me an ESPN Plus show series and like that has to come with what I'm doing. Mm. But when I started, that wasn't my goal because I couldn't ask for it because I wasn't ready for it, yeah. right? But once you work at something and you work to try to master that, which we never truly, you work to try to master that, now it's like, okay, what's the next step that the hard work that got me here affords me? And now because I've earned myself or earned opportunities into those next rooms based on my work, I now take that same work ethic into that. And where does that lead me? And so I think that's what it always is. It's always evolving. It's always the next step. And should you like be excited about your wins? For sure. You, you are blessed to have those wins. But what happens, like if we stop trying to win, we die. And I'm not ready to die. And it, 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 it's not hard to stay humble anyway, because like we're human beings. We're human beings. We just like y'all. We go through ups and downs. We kids, you know, uh, school, car wrecks, rush to the hospital. We deal with real life stuff too. So we have to be prepared for that too. And things happen every day of our life, so we can, we can never get complacent because we are, prote are protectors and providers. And we feel like it's always going to be somebody we can help. So if we, can, if we get complacent, that one person that might need some help, we might not be able to help them. So that's why we got to keep going. And, also, and these people help me too, though. Like, when I watch him succeed, and then every time I see him, he's exactly the same way. Like, that humility, to me, makes me say, like, that's what it's about. If he gonna dap me off, always be the same, always be the same dude I met years ago, I think those are the sort of people that continue to show you that it doesn't have to change because you're being blessed. Because in truth, it ain't really us. Right. Mm. I right. think too, it's, we're so lucky still. You yeah. know what I mean? We've all been retired for a number of years and people still wanna take pictures and yeah. talk to us. I mean, when I first got here, they're like, Matt, the VIP is upstairs. I came right in here and started shaking your hands and taking pictures with people because I feel lucky to be able to do this. I've, it'll be seven years in June since I retired, and I'm as big as I've ever been as, as a business and a, a, as a yeah, person. That's good. So to continue to just think, man, I'm lucky that these people still want to hear me talk. These people want to take pictures with me. Some of the girls in here was trying to flirt with me. Like, <laughs> it's, you know, I, I, it's, 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 it's a blessing, though. You know what I mean? For us to, <laughs> it's I a blessing though teammate, here to, to really to, to really be able to stay relevant after you're done teammate. because we're so much about what are you doing for me lately and what are you doing now for us to all be older retired people and and still have an audience is, is a blessing like this? Is your, is your hair seconds. like this if it's not dreaded though, Chain? What? No. Is your hair like that if I'm it's not dreaded? No. No. Not. He, he Puerto Rican. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's Italian and black. Go ahead. My fault. Yes, sir. <laughs> they're like, oh. There you go. Hey, there you like go, a, Troy. Hey, they're like a coat. <laughs> there you go, Troy. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that nigga got a big square head. I don't know what he was doing. But he, I have a quick answer to that question. My, that nigga got a big ass square head. That bitch related to Zach Thomas. Hey, man, go ahead. Quickly, man. I'm sorry. Hey, I think about it like this. Life is a hill. There's no, I honestly think about it this way. Life's a hill. You're either climbing or you're falling back. If you're not working, you're going to fall. Think about staying on the hill. If you stop, you're going to fall backwards. So you're either driving forward or you're falling backwards. And that's how I think about life. To answer your question, man. Well, we appreciate y'all. Man, I got a pee. I got a pee. Appreciate it, man. That was great, guys. That was awesome.
Yeah, we have yeah, it. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, man. I know what I got to do. You got it, brother. I think I got all your stuff, my man. Man, I got it. I appreciate it. Hold up. Limitless. Take a simic cap pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. On the mission, got me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Take a simic cap pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up.